A friend of mine went to a widow's estate who had some stuff she wanted to unload, and look what he found! An Apple IIc. I always thought this was like the coolest of the plain Apple II computers. It's, it's pretty yellow. I think it looks more yellow in real life than it does on the screen. So it probably needs some retro brighting. I always thought this was a really cool one. Cause it was like, you know, it's like a portable form factor. Well, it's not white. It's like beige on the bottom. I guess that's what, that's its original color. Oh, uh, what the heck? <laughs> oh, that was weird. Oh, these plastic screws probably go into the handle, if I had to guess. Yeah, it's weird. There's plastic screws and machine screws. I'm guessing these four are machine screws. Notice how I, I just go right into taking it apart. Don't turn it on. Take it apart. So yeah, this is a version of the Apple II that had a whole bunch of expansion things added to it. But conversely, you couldn't expand it. Those are longer screws. It didn't have expansion ports like the regular Apple II or Apple IIe. The ones you probably remember from school if you're old. What's holding it in place? Love! Or tabs. Oh. Well, this is its own separate piece. Oh, that's interesting. Retro bright. Hmm, it's actually not too dusty on the inside. Well, I guess that's mostly disk drive. It's more disk drive now than man. Twisted and evil. The belt's still good. You don't have to go all tech mode on it. Why is the rotary encoder on this side? There's nothing that can view it. Maybe it's on both sides. Or maybe that's for testing purposes. Alps! Made in Japan! They got the best stuff in Japan! Ooh, it's got ooh, it's got some crustiness around the power port. Wow, look at all that RAM. Oh, it's got like a little bridge in the back of it. Mm, the keys are pretty crunchy. So the place this came from, apparently there was an Apple IIe with a mouse nest in it. Oh, NCR? <laughs> National Cash Register? Oh, there it is. It's an NCR 6502, 65CO2. Bunch of custom Apple chips. This is probably the ROM right there because it's socketed. What's this big box? I assume that's a power supply? The real question is, can this computer run Attack of the Petski Robots? Oh, it comes off like a cartridge. What the heck? Oh, this must have been out in the country. There's always like ladybugs in the country. Oh, I'm gonna run into these two capacitors. Yeah, it's a power supply, it's its own module. I wonder if that was for regional differences. Well, actually, would it be? Because they had, um, oh, it's double shielded? What? It's like one of those annoying DVD covers where it's like, oh, this DVD has two cases. Oh, this must be an insulating piece on the bottom, like fish paper. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder why they did that. Maybe it didn't uh, didn't pass testing well enough or something. So this thing didn't come with a power supply, although even if it did, I'm sure it was a crusty critter. It's uh, DIN 7, so I ordered some DIN 7s off Amazon. All you need is a DC power supply that has like anywhere from 12 to 18 volts. Guarantee I have something like that laying around. Oh, so this shifts off. What's that screw all about? Maybe I have to remove that. Flathead screw? That's odd. Feels like something I shouldn't remove, but I want to see inside of it. Would they have had, yeah, they probably would have had negative voltage RAM back then. Oh, maybe this is the problem here. Oh, that's probably active. That's probably a heat sink for some uh, regulators. Mount up. 
There's a clear black knot and a clear white moon. Walking Jerry on the street, trying to consume. Oh, something just came loose. That's not good. There we go. What was that? I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. What? <sighs> Alright, so they've got this regulator here, and then I, I think what they did here was this... This piece was like that. See? So the screw pulled it in and held it against the regulator, so the regulator would make contact with the inside. Oh, same thing with this. That is... I've never seen that before on a power slide. That is bizarre. We've got a big old... Actually, we've got a bunch of caps. Oh, uh, none of them look puffy. That's good. It's certainly a unique way to make a power supply. Looks like all of these are ground, and then the unique voltages are on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four. Okay, yeah. So each one of these would be, this would be a, each one of these would be 64K bits. So you put together eight of those, you get 64 kilobytes. Put together two of those, you get 128 kilobytes. I guess this thing would have used bank switching. Oh no, it's a bulge job. So 15 volts go into the supply. Wait, was this the computer they were talking about at the Vintage Computer Fest Midwest where there was like two different... No, they used, they used the... Um, the shielding as as a ground. I think that was they said that was a Mac. I can't remember. I was really really triggered by that. I'm like, what? How could you do such a thing? Oh, wow, the headphone jack is really really stuck in there. Oh, I see. There's a there's a post as well. There we go. Oh, that does have shielding. See? It's underneath. Yeah, you've got this very large trace going down there. That's probably going to be your main DC voltage in coming from a large capacitor. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good chance of being correct. Power switch here. I assume that controls the flow of the 15 volts. And it looks like it's also sending like a power good signal back. Or oh, or maybe or maybe the that power supply is switching like this thing is actually turning it on like a soft switch. Actually, that's no, I don't think that's the case. You get what I assume is a big choke here, right next to the capacitor. Oh no, it's another bulged resistor. I don't see why Arctic Silver wouldn't work. <laughs> right. Oh yes. That's got to work better than whatever that thermal paper was. And I don't envy the person whose job it was at the factory to do this part. They'd be like, I hate my job. Steve Jobs! 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 Con! 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 I will leave you as you left me. Buried alive. In the tomb of unsold apple leases. I no longer have to kill you, Steve Jobs. I've hurt you. And I wish to go on. Oh, wait. He did die. Never mind. Too soon. Okay, I got it together, but I'm actually going to take it apart again to make sure the thermal paste spread. Oh, it just melted in place. Ah. Ah, you'd hope not for what they charge for these things back in the day. Mm, this insulation layer is melted in place. See these little bosses they've got coming off of the casing? Yeah. Does retrobriting affect metal? Yeah. yeah. Whatever. I can just tape it back down. Probably almost press it back into place actually. Yeah, no rust. That's good. Why didn't the magnet work at the high school? Because it was Ferris Bueller's day off. I just made up that joke. Well, I need to get some retro-briding juice, I guess. 
I did it once before. I think it was the Mario Cement Factory. I used a hydrogen peroxide. Is that what it was? Yeah. That I found at, I think, Walgreens or something. I know that you're supposed to use stronger stuff than that. But the hydrogen peroxide you get at Walgreens isn't very high concentration. Maybe I'll just buy some retro right off Amazon or something. And, but uh, I probably got some good sunny days. Maybe not Texas sunny days. But probably some good sunny days yet I could do this like out in the driveway. Oh, these keys are crusty critters. Ew, why are they all? They're all like, hear that? Oh, I hope the springs aren't bad. That would be bad. Every key has like this two-stage gunk to it. Like you push it. Goes down a little bit and then goes down the rest of the way. What, bud? Da, 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 da. <laughs> Cat attack. I think we need to do a crime scene investigation on this. I'm gonna desolder one and see if we can take it apart. What? It's like, it looks like a little quasar or something. What the hell? That's what? What? It's what? That's what? It's like a little quasar. What the heck? It's like a tack switch. There's four pins, but two of the pins go to this surface. And the other two go to the lower substrate. But why does that make it sticky? Whoa! Bud, you were once an abandoned kitten. This is an abandoned computer. It's the same thing except for it's better looking. Ha 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 ha! Okay, so this is... I mean, I don't really see why this... I mean, it's dirty, but I don't see that why that would stop it from working. Well, I'm sure electrically it's fine. I think the crunchiness is actually coming from this little cotter spring. Well, not cotter spring, cotter pin looking spring here. Where's my tweezers? Here's my old, old tweezers. I think it's this spring causing the issue. Maybe the springs have just all sprung. I took it out, so now there's no springs. Oh, Coily, couldn't I take back my wish? Well, okay, just this once. But don't ever wish for something like that again. Oh man, I wish I never had to deal with the herpes again. So, you don't want to deal with herpes, huh? No. All right, you got your wish. You live in a world without herpes. Thanks. What is even the purpose of this? Besides making my life a living heck. See how I didn't say hell? Yeah, because when you, when you first start pushing down on it, there's a little nub which applies pressure outwardly on each one of those tines. I just love saying the word tine. Is that just to make it click? <laughs> old Steve Jobs. He had this crazy idea about naming a computer after his estranged daughter. You son of a female dog, you killed my pine. I got all the time I want. I got a time machine. I'm going to go back a mere 10 minutes early and warn him. Great. So I'm going to have to go through and adjust all these springs. Lovely. Oh, <clears throat> I wish there never was ever invented a spring. I wish I never had to pay taxes again. Who are you? I'm Taxi, the tax sprite. I'm going to make it so you get your wish. No taxes. So did Coily the spring sprite, did that predate It's a Wonderful Life? Did a wonderful life rip off that video or was it the other way around? I don't know. I, all the cars in that video are pretty old. Remember when What's-His-Face would do all the narration for Comedy Central? I met him at his Vegas show. Uh, oh, yeah, Penn Jillette. After the show, they meet everyone that wants to meet them. 
The interesting thing about that duo is um, uh, Teller. Teller isn't like that short. I mean, he's about my height, which isn't tall. I mean, it's Wisconsin short, but it's Vegas average height. Um, but uh, the other guy, he just looks short because the other guy is pretty tall. Wasn't there a Mac a couple years ago that had like some sort of switch design flaw? I think I saw it on the Lewis Rossman real estate channel. Look, they've got two layers of protection to keep your keys nice and clean. And that one's also hot stamped into place. Ugh. I take back everything I said. Oh, they hot stamped it into the keys. Look at that. Oh, come on. You know, this thing was like $3,100 in today's dollars. Oh, that doesn't mean a whole lot these days. Should probably hit this with the air compressor. Oh man, all of these are crunchy. You know what you need? What you really need is a bath. Whoa, he quoted a different Indiana Jones movie for a change. Yes, I quoted a different one of the three Indiana Jones movies. Not four, not five, three. All right, I got a DIN 7 from Amazon. I wired it up according to how the internet says it's supposed to be. But, uh, not getting anything. Is the plug corroded, I wonder? I mean, I'm getting voltage here, but I'm not seeing it here, and the unit's also not turning on. Maybe that bargain basement DIN connector is just not good enough. Maybe? I'll try my bench power supply hook 12 volts directly up to the pins I'll try that next oh, maybe I have to spend more than 10 cents on a din connector all right I've got 12 volts hooked directly up actually well it's yellow so it's gonna be 12 volts I'll double check it just to be sure okay power supply on 12.2 volts okay power supply off Connecting, got the video plugged in. Still nothing. Maybe there's something causing a power drop. Power supply on, oh, something is dropping the power. My power supply is blinking on and off, but the switch isn't even on. <sighs> Maybe there's like a bad coil or something on this. I'm gonna try it with a modular power supply unplugged. Maybe that power supply is like a point of failure. Oh, hmm, that's not good. We do get 12 volts. Nothing happens when I flip the switch. Uh, okay. So something is wrong with the power brick, or the internal power supply. Is there a tear in the fish paper? Oh, you can see, like, some of the points were rubbing against it. Yep, yeah, the voltage still dropped. You know, I think I actually had a book, like a total reference guide for the Apple IIc, but I loaned it to a friend of mine. According to the schematic, it seems like everything is 5 volts. I actually did a search um, for information on this and I came across Adrian's Digital Basement. My close personal friend, but I think he just, uh, I think he just, he had some different issues. He had like a row column address strobe issue. So looking at the schematic, the power, internal power supply creates 12 volts, 5 volts, and then negative, uh, negative 12 volts. So I guess the system isn't quite old enough to have negative voltage RAM. Uh, it is DRAM, which means it needs to be refreshed and has like row column strobe stuff. So it's possible, actually, it's quite likely that if we just apply 5 volts directly to the bus, the serial chips won't work because they won't have positive negative 12 volts. I'm guessing that's why because well Okay, they're serial chips, right? But those those are serializer chips, but then they actually go through converter chips I don't know where those are that actually take the TTL serial logic and turn it into positive 12 negative 12 Which is what old-school serial was so There's a gulf of 24 volts was it the movie The Explorers where they ran a computer off a 9-volt battery? I always thought that was so cool as a kid. I think I was inspired by that. I mean, do you really need the serial chips on this thing? I don't know. 
I mean, all they're going to do is not export the right voltages. I don't think it'll fry anything. You know what? I'm just going to go for it. I don't, know if, <laughs> I don't know. Famous last words. So this switch does. It is a soft on, which is kind of weird considering how big it is. There's a pin on this, the FFF pin. If it gets pulled low, then it turns this brick on. If it's high to 12 volts, 12 volt DC input voltage, then the brick is off. So I wonder if you could just replace the entire brick. Well, but then the floppy drive pr probably wouldn't work. Yeah, I'm sure the floppy drive takes 12 volts. I wonder if you could replace this with like batteries or something. That'd be kind of cool. And then it would be like that movie. Yeah, wasn't it like they built a spaceship out of garbage and then they flew into space? Was that a... Uh, who made that movie? It was either... Uh, it's either Joe Dante, Richard Donner, or Nick Castle. I don't know which one it was. I actually met Nick Castle very briefly last year. He's a nice guy. Uh, okay, so I'm going to turn on my pawn shop television. Come on, turn on pawn shop television. Uh, I wonder if this will work or blow up. So this, if it works, it'll just turn the system on immediately as soon as I turn on my bench power supply. Uh, no guts, no glory. And it's booting. Uh, it's, it's got a built-in demo scene. The keyboard has a reset key on it, so I thought maybe you need that to boot it up and... Well, there you go, Apple 2C, although it's not doing anything. Well, clearly the fault is that power brick. This is the best way to use an Apple computer. According to the schematic, the RAM was all 5 volts, so it's not that. Like, if you want a few... Well, this is, what, 1984? If you want a few years back in time, you need a negative voltage for your DRAM, but that's not the case with this. Turn on your heart light. Let it shine wherever you go. Okay, control. It's probably trying to boot the disk. Control reset. Uh, okay, that got me into a prompt. The, key, the keys are just going wild, though. How come pressing reset doesn't do any... Well, I guess it did do something. This is what it's doing now. It's the world's lamest game of snake. I double-checked the schematics. The keyboard controller chip needs negative 12 volts. Ah, oh, there's your problem. Do I have any computer power supplies that have negative 12 volts? That's probably why it's acting erratically. I mean, it sort of worked, but it didn't work. Well, I mean, the computer itself mostly works, right, bud? Do you want to try to fix it? All right, bud, fix the computer. Did you figure it out? Fix it using your paws. Stranger Things transition. Just dump something onto a table. If we uh, put a switch between green and ground, it'll turn the power supply on. And then we can just wire up 12 volts and five volts directly to the motherboard. And maybe that'll make it work. If you hear a thumping in the background of my zero production value video, that's the Roomba I turned it on to distract Bud. They're justified, and they're ancient, and they like to roam the land. They're justified, and they're ancient, with still no master plan. Bring the beat back, oh, bound for Moo Moo Land. Moo Moo Land. What is it, Junior? Sounds like you've heard of that term before. Ah, uh, it's just a ghost story, Dad. Don't worry about it. You say everything is a ghost story, and then it turns out to be real. How many miracles do you need to see before you become a man of faith? I, I don't know. I guess four or five movies worth. So what is Moo Moo Land? Well... It goes by many names in many cultures, but some believe it's a mythical lost city. Like Atlantis? Yeah, well, it's just a ghost story, Dad. Stop saying that! Your mother said that I was searching for ghost stories, and then we found the Holy Grail. That's true, Dad. And then everyone online was like, why isn't Indiana Jones immortal if he drank from the Holy Grail? It's like they didn't even watch the movie. The knight says, you must stay here. That is the cost of immortality. It tells me that people online should watch movies before they quote them. This is a setup that I think you could charitably call ungainly. 
And I just thought, oh, I could program something in basic. How are you gonna do that without any keys? It's like, this is like a hold my beard Dvorak keyboard. Well, I guess I should flip it on and see what happens. Oh, that's an improvement. It says check disk drive now. Okay, control reset. And there is a proper prompt. So yes, we needed that negative 12 volts on the keyboard line. I wonder, well, I'm not the keyboard line, the keyboard control chip, which is covered by the keyboard at the moment. Trust me, it's there. R, U, N. Hey, look at that, I did it. Okay, you know I'm going to try this, right? All right, I need to channel my inner Mavis Beacon who teaches typing. <laughs> One, zero. You know what? No, I'll take 19. Where's the backspace key? Was it like left arrow? Oh, yeah, that, okay. Okay, I keep hitting O. P, E, R, I, N, T, space. Oh, <laughs> Uh, shift two, no, shift, where, it, where is it? We gotta get this big guy back into action. Where is it on the apple? There it is. Now can I remember? <laughs> All right, let's go back. I guess we could just print that. No, we can't. H E L, okay, L L O space W O R in Latin Jehovah starts with an I L space L back back L back oh no I lost the R R's over here no where is R typewriter oh R's over here R L Wasad D. Okay, I'm not gonna get cute and do exclamation marks. Enter. Two. Anything? I'll just I'll take anything over nineteen. G. No. Go to space. Nineteen. R U N. Syntax error in line two. What the? How did a line two get created? All right, well, let's get rid of it. R U N. Oh, that was excruciating, but I did it. It's the ghost of Mavis Beacon who teaches typing. You have done well, my student, to remember all the lessons I gave you back in the eighties. I couldn't have done it without you, Mavis Beacon. The power was within you all along, Ben. Wow, thanks. You really helped me on this Apple project. Now I must return to my old planet. Goodbye. I think I'm going to try to fix this power supply because that's easier than trying to rebuild it. Maybe it's just bad caps. I mean, I guess a bad cap could cause a short. Definitely seems like it's a short. So these are all ground on the front. Then on this side we have our power input, which is 12 volts according to the schematic, but it must be regulated because you can put up to 18 volts into this thing. There's two negative 12 volt pins. As far as I know, they're just used for the serial chips and for some reason the keyboard. Ground, all sorts of funky traces. Look at this 12 volt trace here. How it winds around there. I don't think it's on the 2C side. I've got this hooked up to my bench, another one of my bench power supplies. Yeah. Yeah, we get pretty good undervolt when we connect it, so something's wrong with this. And that's even with the, um, you know, again, the power supply is disabled. Uh, this pin right here, the, well, that's what's connected to the power switch itself. So as I mentioned, it's a, a soft on power switch. I drew a map of the capacitors. So maybe, maybe we can start removing them and see if that makes any difference. Uh, well, wait, it's 3300 microfarads, so that would be 3.3 millifarads. So that's testing correctly. So yeah, all the capacitors uh, tested in the right range. Uh, they're all good quality capacitors. I'll probably try to swap as many as I can as well, but they're, you know, they're good. They're Nippon and Nishikon, so that shouldn't be a problem. I did remove this, which is a, um, 
Switching NPN transistor. Wait, let me get the exact thing. Switch mode series NPN silicon power transistor. And this was heat sunk to the case. When I remove this, it no longer causes a dead short, but probably also no longer does anything. So I wonder if it's being used as a switching power supply and something, I guess disabling it stopped the problem. So it's progress. Okay, I looked up how to test a uh, power transistor because I don't know everything. I don't. Two out of five of the tests for this were came back bad. So I think this guy is blown. So I'm gonna have to buy a new one of these, I think. Uh, in the meantime, I'll replace whatever capacitors I have that fit. I guess I could order some new capacitors as well. Got all the capacitors in. Ordered them from DigiKey. Guess I'll stuff them. The um, switching power transistor to get it, it's uh, obsolete. So I had to get a new old stock off of, uh, well, I had to get it off of eBay. And uh, it's coming from Germany. So, yeah, so I'm gonna make sure I get all the polarities right. Of course, the stripe points to ground. Ooh, these capacitors are red. I would walk 1,000 microfarads. And I would walk 1,000 microfarads more. I'm gonna actually, I don't usually do it this way, but I'm gonna pre-clip it to make the leads as short as possible. Although we probably don't, well, no, we we do need to put that can back on because it acts as a heat sink for the two regu- well, one thing's not a regulator, it's a power transistor. Oh, anyway, so yeah, I got the uh, Retro Bright gel. So I sprayed it on the components and I smeared it around with my hands and then I put it out in the sun. Now, that was October, what's the date today? That was October 15th in Wisconsin, so the sun is, well, it's lower in the sky and there's trees south of me, so. Yeah, I probably only got about five hours of direct sunlight on it, but yeah, it was enough. Except for the spot I have to redo. Uh, I think next week I might get the power transistor, maybe. All right, so another 3.30 goes right there. I don't really need more computers, but I don't know. I always thought the Apple IIc was cool, although apparently it didn't really sell very well. Yeah, worst case, I can take it to VCF next year and sell it for a great price, like $40 or whatever, whatever it costs. Well, because, yeah, this video will probably make more than the computer cost. I mean, not like by a huge margin, so it's a win-win. Oh, boy, the replacement transistor came in from Germany. See how it says, Werten get stocken von America? I guess that's what they call us over there. Yeah, I had to buy the chip like new old stock. It's obsolete. And they had some from China, but I trust Germans more. Yeah, BUV 2G MPN from Han Semiconductor. 13 euros, which is about 80 US cents. Why restore one Apple IIc when you can restore two Apple IIcs? <laughs> yes, that's right. These girls have been nowhere near the bananas. Uh, yeah, I was at the uh, Pinball Expo yesterday in Chicago, and some guy was selling these. Someone's like, oh, I saw Apple IIc over at that guy's booth. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's the same guy who has the laser active. Yeah, so oh, you know what else he had? He had a whole bunch of X10 modules. And I was like, okay, how about some X10 modules? Then this 2C. Then the usual, oh, it looks pretty heavy. I don't want to take all this home. 50 bucks for the whole thing. So not bad. Uh, I guess we can test it. Well, I'll solder it in and then we'll apply 12 volts and see if the source voltage drops. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. Hey, the voltage stayed on. So I'm thinking with it disconnected, it probably is turning the power supply on. So I guess we can just test one of the other rails and find out. So I mentioned this in one of the comments, but I guess it wouldn't necessarily be in the video. So the previous video that I made, I was talking about this basement where in my house where there was a knife sharpening shop. And then, uh, so very serendipitously, a week after I made that video, I'm in my garage. And this old guy walks up and he's like, are you Ben? And he's like, look at this piece of paper. And I'm like, oh my God, I bet that's the original owner of the house. And I'm like, you're, and then I said his name and he's like, how did you know? And I'm like, well, I'm actually able to come to conclusions very quickly. Yeah, he's still alive. He's 92 years old. So I gave him a tour 
of everything that had changed because uh, he lived here from 1957 to 19 or 2007. Someone in the comments of the video said, oh, that square hole in the wall was for a telephone and you were right. That is what it was for. That's what he said. All right, so this is allegedly has five volts. So let's see if that works. Uh, I guess I should, if I turn on my meter. But yeah, I was able to ask him, okay, what's this lump in the floor all about? What's this all about? Why is this here? And I got all the answers. So yeah, well, we hung out for like a, oh, an hour or two. He was a, he was a cool old guy. He actually reminded me a lot of me, strangely enough. Like he started in one career and then ended up as an engineer, like just by chance. Five volts, nice, cool. So I just thought that was really weird. <laughs> yeah, I made a video talking about like the history of my basement, my house, and then something I, I'd always, cause I, well, actually, you know what? Here, I'll show you. Uh, this is like in my laundry room. Like I found, well, these were here. I saw these when I toured the place. All these tags labeling all the pipes and stuff. And I'm like, oh, wow. An engineer must have lived here. <laughs> so what I've done with much worse handwriting is continue the tradition. But yeah, if you look at the way the, the handwriting is, it's very much like draftsman's handwriting or, you know, like how they, the font they use when doing drafts work. So I always thought, yeah, I always thought that his job was, he was a knife sharpener and he used the basement for that. But no, that it was his side job. <laughs> so his day job was, yes, he was a mechanical engineer, which explains a lot. Yeah, again, so he was very much like me, like he had a good day job, but was still doing other work on the side, which... And then he's like, yeah, after a while I got tired of it. I'm like, oh my gosh, that sounds exactly like why I left YouTube. Or, you're doing it full time. I had this idea for a New Year's resolution. It's gonna sound really pretentious, though. Make more snap decisions and rely more on my intuition. This, this is the handwriting of an engineer. Wait, he was a knife sharpener? Nope, he was an engineer. It's actually something I'm really good at. I know that sounds braggy, but I don't know. Like, uh, I just, I don't know. I can just, I can just figure that stuff out really pretty quickly. I was at the bar last week and there's this guy and I don't know how it came up, but he started talking about ham radios. And then like one minute of the conversation, I'm like, you were in the Navy, weren't you? And he's like, how did you know that? And I'm like, eh, I just figured it out. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I should rely on my intuition more. So maybe that's going to be my New Year's resolution. All right, I'm going to add some more Arctic silver so that this new transistor can sync to the case as does this regulator. It had like some thin thermal paper in there before, well, thermal transfer paper, but it's old, so. Arctic silver would be great. Then it was time to see if, uh, how about an impression of Linus Tech Tips? Um, and with that, it was time to apply the thermal paste, but something happened. First, a word from our sponsor, Ball Shave Club. I can't believe that one time when he, took apart a red camera and then he's like, we're gonna make our own heat sink for it. It's like, <laughs> this foe is beyond any of you. <laughs> now, if you're like AVE, then you could do it. But I mean, AVE makes the rest of us look like rank amateurs. I'm not even sure if I wanna put the casing back around this. I'm just, I'm kind of worried that like some of the capacitors I put in, the leads might be higher. I guess I could grind the whole thing off, but. Now with RetroBright, you can make your Apple IIc go from looking like this, to this! Hey, how about another YouTube impression? Now, Chip Dippers, we're going to put the circuit board back into the case. And now, it fits nicely into the case. Wait, this part's not fitting. It just needs a little love. Perfect. Yeah, you know what, screw it. I'm just gonna put this in. I mean, like, this is completely bereft of any traces or vias. I say, Toad's going into the Wildwood. Gotta love how Apple, being the most overpriced computer brand by a country mile, is also the only one to use melted plastic to hold things in place, such as a speaker. Here at Apple, we believe in continuing the traditions of the past. So how can we honor Steve Jobs melting speakers in place? Uh, what if we glued together our $1,500 cell phones? Brilliant! I also retrobited the plastic on the disk drive. Hopefully the disk drive works. The belt's intact. I think that's probably its most likely failure point because those old steppers and whatnot, those things are solid as a rock. Okay, well, working backwards, this uh, power supply that I rigged up with a DIN should work now. 12 volts at 2.5 amps. Okay, so I think this thing is... I think the power supply is supposed to be like from 12 to 18 volts at like 1.5 amps. So this one's on a little on the low end for voltage, but since it has a higher uh, current rating, that should make up for it. 
Oh yeah, it's like 15 watts. So it's, and I'm sure most of that is the disk drive. That other Apple IIe I showed you, I think it's got the better keyboard on it because remember they use different vendors for the keyboard. So, huh, still nothing. Did I miss something? I thought I fried that new transistor, but I don't think I did. I, I turn on the power supply, it doesn't dip out, and then if we poke around, 5 volts. I think it's something to do with that metal can that goes around this. Because it works when I don't have the can in place. It can't be the Arctic Silver. Arctic Silver does not conduct electricity. Arctic Silver doesn't conduct electricity. I don't think it insulates from it either. Were those pieces of tape in there? Were those acting as heat transfers and also insulators? That's entirely possible. The system didn't work. <sighs> what a crazy design. I mean, that's probably the problem. Okay, I've got this thermal transfer material. At least I think that's what it is. It was in the Peltier bucket, so it must be. Felix probably bought it. So I'm gonna put it on the inside where the uh, transistors touch the case. Ah, that's just a bizarre design choice to have things heat sunk to a case, but they can't they can't use it as a ground reference. It, it shorts it out. I mean, although I guess I've heard about the new MacBooks and apparently Apple's uh, questionable thermal management continues to this day. The screw holding on the other regulator wasn't turning, so I chopped it off with some bolt cutters and it looks like it's a uh, metric M3. All right, so now we have these thermal pads in place. Yeah, now it works. Oh, my goodness. I put in, I, I cut these way bigger than, than they needed to be. But then, yeah, at the same time, so yeah, when you tighten this screw and the screw that I replaced, you're pulling that piece tight against the transistor so that it, you know, sinks heat into the case. But yeah, what if you tighten it too much? You know, you could probably cut through that uh, insulation and then cause a short again. Follow me up to San Francisco. Oh, be glad you came. All right, cool. Five volts. Now it should be working. Arizona. Oh, will you work now? Yes! There we go. There's the basic prompt. Cool. Yeah, well, I've got the cords laying around. Yeah, this one needs more cleaning than the other one before I can retrobrite it. Look at these keys. These keys are not affected at all. Actually, neither are these, but the space bar is. Uh, all right. What do you think the chances are this thing turns on? And go. Oh, that one works just fine. <laughs> look, at, look at the difference. This is the one that I retrobrighted. Now granted, this one that I recently found is more yellow than the old one was, but look at how much it changed. <laughs> this might be the most yellowed old computer I've ever seen. Although it came apart easier than the first one. I can tell this is the better quality keyboard on this one. I'm guessing it's gonna be a different manufacturer. Yeah, see, this is actually Alps. Oh yeah, well yeah, see it's got a different piece that slots in. Mm, I guess the question is, will it fit on the other one? Who do you trust? Photo Circuits Atlanta or Alps? Uh, don't Alps also make those analog sticks for modern controllers which drift? Um, uh, <clears throat> pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Cool, looks like it fits. Oh yeah, this keyboard feels so much better than the other one. Listen, you could... You can just hear it. I didn't notice it from the first keyboard, but it also has a more yellowed uh, space bar, whereas the keys themselves look pretty good. I wonder if this was um, pressed with a different mold, like a mar larger mold because it's so much bigger and also with a different kind of plastic. I mean, what else would explain that? I retro brighted the space bar. Now it should match the rest of the keys. This post, this guiding post, broke off, so I re-glued the piece back in place. Let's do another sanity check. Control reset. Okay, there's basic prompt. Oh yeah, this keyboard feels nice. What? 
quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dogs as a syntax error. So it also came with this Unidisc 3.5 inch floppy drive, which I guess is quite the score. Problem is I checked in the uh, ROM version on the, this 2GS doesn't support the Unidisc. So why was this here? Did this person also have a Macintosh somewhere? I don't know. Or a 2GS? Well, I finally got the disc out. Apple data for osmosis. Uh, doesn't seem like it's... Oh, did that, did that go in? This is the manual eject lever. You push a pin on it normally through a hole. Uh, that hole. That's what that's for. To remove the disc. This outer aluminum case seems to be press riveted together. Does that mean this whole thing pulls out? What is the purpose of this? Why would you put this in? What, this is just flapping in the breeze apparently? Oh no, are you kidding me? Ah, oh, it's bumping up against the circuit board of the LED light. Apple! <laughs> I'm Steve Jobs. Oh man, this video is like so long. And thanks for all the fish. Come on, you had to have known I would say that, right? Wow! I believe this uh, disk drive has a CPU in it. It has its own 6502, which is the same thing that the Commodore and the Atari did. Because floppy disks are, uh, yeah, back in the day, they're kind of complicated things. There was a floppy drive controller that was, well, it was an add-on card for the Apple II. Uh, and had the, the WAS circuit, because one of the most famous things about the Apple II was the Waz built like the most amazing hard drive, well, disk drive circuit ever. This is back when, instead of just having a boring old flash stick, you had all these cams and follower lovers. And... Oh, look, there's a tack switch for the uh, right protect tab. See that? How it goes up into that tab hole. Yeah, it seems like, yeah, it seems like it's having trouble fully engaging. Oh, yeah, there is some really old grease on here. It's, well, it's really old. It feels stickier than slippier. Maybe I need to clean this up. Oh, it's got a 8K ROM on it. Oh, everything's... Uh, oh, ooh, oh, there's a disk drive controller in the back. Look at that. And, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to remove this shield just because it would take too much desoldering, but it looks like it has... A CPU and then two RAM chips on top and of course a ROM. So this right here is like its own little 8-bit computer just around the disk drive. Again, that was really common back then. Commodore Atari did the same thing. There was also the issue of pushing the button and then the uh, elegant ejector motor right there wouldn't fully eject it, although that might have been due to the stickiness. I think right here is probably the biggest culprits. Greasy, grimy gopher guts of which you can have great big globs. Shut up, computer. This kind of looks like Iron Man's suit when he puts it on and all the gears and cogs engage. And then he gets that stupid nanoparticle suit where it's like, well, I guess there's no rules now with his suit. And then Black Panther's like, I too have a nanoparticle suit. Oh, and I'm dead. And then it's like, well, now that Black Panther's dead, we must make a movie which, instead of recasting Black Panther, will talk about how the kingdom deals with the loss of a leader. And apparently no one at Marvel was like, wait a minute, wasn't Black Panther gone for five years after Thanos blipped everyone? Oh, well, uh, eh, well, no, but this this time it's worse. Yeah. Yeah, he, he died an even more inglorious death, and the nation is reeling. So you need human power, <laughs> human power to push the disc in than a motor to pull it out. As expected, Captain, it is a song sung by whales. Whales? Wait, why would the Klingons have recordings of whales on their ship? And then it cuts to a Klingon, family guy style. I'm kind of a huge whale nerd. Oh yeah, so this rotates, this little cam here rotates backwards and pulls that. So yeah, so the, the jet motor is doing that. If my thumb has trouble, this little motor's definitely gonna have trouble. You know, when I Google image searched for uh, Family Guy Klingons, there were less results than I thought there would be. 
I mean, they were they were still above zero results, which I figured, but not as many as I thought there would be. All right, I briefly hooked it up to the Apple IIGS, and it does now eject, so that's good. I'm going to put it together. What? This ferrite bead is covered with some sort of insulating foam. <laughs> Probably just like in that power supply. I might still have some left over from high school, come <laughs> to think of it. Actually, you know, I think it's in the other room. Stranger Things transition. Here's all the floppy disks I, I could find. Ooh, ooh. Cuddle cart, yes! Oh, some of my old uh, design files for the Atari, original Atari portables. And oh! Oh my gosh, that's, that's one of the first ones! Stella version 1 backup disk. Oh, Miro Video! This is the driver disk for the video capture card we used back in 1997. Oh my gosh, this must be the original disk! Look! See? 4, 12 of 0, 0. Yeah, so this would have been the original disk I would have had the CNC files on for my original portable. Huh. Mouse, Sony... Ah, this is all Windows, though. A Mi boot disk? Probably should throw that away. Uh, yeah, so when I took this apart, that uh, strain relief, that metal strain relief on the case screw there, wasn't installed. And just now I installed it, and it was actually kind of a pain in the butt to install, so maybe that's why it wasn't installed, but... I think I spy with my eye another possible manufacturing faux pas. <laughs> oh, for shame, Apple. See, the, the shielding of a cable goes to the can of the connector, but they don't have it connected to ground. Unbelievable. Apple tax. Yeah, it's worth it. Yeah, that disconnected uh, strain relief. I mean, maybe someone took this apart in the past and then just didn't put that back together, but yeah, the shielding of the cable not being attached to ground is something that there's there's no way that accidentally happened. That would have been factory. Oh, look, there's a little window that shows a serial number. Huh. Reminds me of when the game consoles would have a window on the box exposing the serial number on the back of the console. Right there, see? You know, this is starting to feel like the never ending project. Do 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 do. <laughs> In order to use that Unity drive, I need a new ROM version on this computer. So I've got to open it back up and swap out the ROM and probably do a hack on the circuit board. But I found a website that tells you how to do it. So I'll put the information on the screen here. That's why I invented this the flux capacitor. What does a flux capacitor do, Doc Brown? What does it mean? I have no idea! Yeah, there's the W1 and the W2 spots. And that actually allows you to bridge the A14 line and connect it to the ROM. That gives you a 32K ROM instead of a 16K ROM. So I gotta cut that and solder bridge that. Oh, and also flash the ROM. Do 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 do. Never ending project. I should probably have used my Dremel for this just to be sure. Actually, I can cut a little ways back and then peel up the copper. That's probably a better way to do it. So this would have been the original release of the 2C since it has the 16K ROM FF, if it's called. You can poke, uh, oh, I'm sorry, peak. You can peak 64447 and it'll return a number telling you the ROM version, so... This is ROM FF, which probably means they didn't intend it to return anything. And uh, we're putting in ROM 00, which will then return, get this, 00. zero. But see, this is back when they're like, oh, someone might want a different ROM in the future. I know, let's socket the ROM. Nowadays, it'd be like, that socket costs 60 cents. I will give you a new body. And new troops to command. And? And nothing. You belong to me now. I belong to nobody. Perhaps I misjudged you. Go. Wait, I'm doing the impression like Leonard Nimoy, but it's not. It's it's uh, Orson Welles. It's Leonard Nimoy, but like, Perhaps I misjudged you. Go then, on your way to oblivion! Wait, he was in that movie too, yeah. But no, but Omicron was Orson Welles. 
Oh, or why can't I think of an Orson Welles impression? Why does my Orson Welles impression sound like Leonard Nimoy? But actually, in that movie, Orson Welles, that was his last movie he ever was in before he died. Transformers the movie. I am Orson Welles, and I'm really old. They paid me in whore chickens. 72 of them. I've actually amassed a lot of uh, EPROMs over the years. I'll pull them out of, like, old arcade machines or, like, worthless ones, like Cherry Masters and stuff like that. Yeah, so what, we got some uh, 2K, 4K, a lot of 8K, eh, not so many 16K, and loads of 32K. So 32K you can still get. And you can also get like these one-time programmables. Like these are actually new ones made by Atmel. So, well, you just program them once. So if you know, if you know, you know, I'm not going to change it, then yeah, you can just use one of these. Otherwise, you got the windowed ones where you can uh, use a UV box or just leave them outside for a couple days and they'll be erased. But yeah, we're going to use the uh, 32K version. Because, no, Starscream was like the conniving one, but he, he wasn't, he was the one who threw his boss out of the space train. Because he was like, the eyes have it! So, yeah, because, yeah, then, wait, does Megatron turn into Leonard Nimoy after he gets his new body? Because then he goes to the Coronation and he's like, Coronation Starscream, this is bad comedy. Megatron, is that you? Here's a hint. I don't know, it's been forever since I've seen that movie. See, once my eyes go and I can't do this anymore, then I, I guess I'll just get a job doing impressions of, of people. It's a good thing I blocked that from the light since it's going to be inside of a case. Megatron becomes Galvatron and his voice also changes. They actually killed a lot of legacy characters in that movie. It's a good thing that movie didn't come out when the internet existed. <laughs> Is Transformers the movie The Last Jedi of Transformers? Here's a hint! I don't know, Last Jedi didn't have any Weird Al songs in it. Or Stan Bush. You've got the touch. Da, da, da. You've got the power. Guess I could have used some. Oh no! Our, our base is being destroyed and somehow Finn lived. You've got the touch. It's Luke. You've got the power. And all the geeks in the theater, instead of like, you know, starting to write their, uh, their reviews about how much they hated it, they would be like, yes! Galvatron makes me think of like galvanized metal. It's like, I, why would you want to be galvanized metal? It doesn't sound very cool. Oh, look, the speaker cone isn't even protected with like some foam or something. So, you know, like your little five year old kid could pull out an X Acto knife and like just destroy the speaker. Wow, man. All right, let's get this computer hooked up to a real CRT and try some games. Oh, wait, I don't have any. I'm going to have to order some off eBay. The disc finally came in. Fraction Munchers, the greatest game ever. Let's see if the disk drive works. Switching on. Disk light is on. Oh, wow, that loaded quickly. Fraction Munchers. <laughs> this is a game in which you have to munch fractions. Ooh, equivalent fractions. Let's try this one. I don't need instructions for fraction munchers. Oh, I am so ready to munch fractions. <laughs> okay, equivalent to one-fifth. Okay. Oh, you got that little speaker there going here. It's not very loud. One oh no, an evil troggle. Does this have joystick support? Is it timed out? Come on. There we go. These are all the same. Oh no, did I eat three eighths instead? Three eighteenths equals one sixth. Okay, well I know this one's right. How did they pitch this? It's like it's like Pac-Man with fractions. Yes, I got all the fractions. Equivalent to one tenth. Okay, there's one. Get away from me! Okay, uh, oh, there's three thirtieths. What's the deal with fractions anyway? Like, what's wrong with decimals? Oh, I bet it gets harder as you go along. Two fifths, okay. Wait, that's not the same as, no, it has to be an odd number. Oh, there we go, four tenths. Four tenths. 
615. Okay, yeah, because that's times three times three. The Muncher Olympiad. What? Huh? What the heck is this? Oh, it's a cutscene. Well, there you have it. A complete restoration video for the Apple IIc computer. Obviously, I made some dumb mistakes along the way. Although I think that old power supply was a little weak anyway because the original uh, transistor didn't survive any of my tests. Whereas the newer transistors did survive when I shorted things out. So yeah, uh, now I have a 2C. I'm thinking maybe I can uh, take this to the Vintage Computer Fest next year, maybe. Well, I don't know if I can give it away because these things are have some value, but I'll sell it to you for a great price. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Oh, I still have the uh, Unidisc to test, although I don't have any discs for that yet. So I'll have to cover that in an upcoming video. Well, I hope you enjoyed this restoration of the Apple IIc computer. Maybe that thing has like a little fraction muncher butt. See, why aren't they attacking me? They're like pacifists. Oh yeah, he'll eat me if I walk into his mouth. I remember, I remember playing this when I was in uh, grade school, back in 1863.